This will be my final update for now. Things have deteriorated here to a degree that I didn't foresee. I didn't realize how much writing about my experiences out in the forest would affect every single aspect of my life. Maybe that was stupid of me. Maybe I should have thought about this more seriously, but honestly, I just thought I was sharing interesting stories that people wanted to hear. I didn't think it would get this much attention. People ask me personally about the stairs now. It doesn't happen every day, but when it does happen, I never really know what to say. My bosses have figured out that someone has been talking about them, and I'm sure that if they know, then the higher-ups must know too, and I can tell you they are not happy about it. I've now been formally told that I'm not to speak a word about them to anyone anymore, which is part of the reason this has to be my final update. I can't risk my job for this. As much as I've enjoyed getting this all off my mind, I do still love my work. If anything, my awareness of what truly goes on out here is even more of a reason to stick to it. I may not be able to warn people about exactly what they'll encounter out here, but at least I can do my best to protect them. Since this has gotten so much attention lately, even more crazy stories from my coworkers have been spreading around. I've heard so many that I can't even remember most of them at this point. The ones I do remember, however, are the ones I wish I could forget. One story that's made the rounds was about a young woman who disappeared upstate. Everyone assumed she was a runaway at first. She didn't have a great home life, so it wasn't much of a surprise that she'd up and leave. But it wasn't long before people started coming forward, saying that they'd seen her around the park shortly before she vanished. Some of the rangers in the area were sent out to make sure she hadn't hung herself or anything like that on the back trails. It took them a while, but they did eventually find her. Well, not all of her. Just half of her tongue and a quarter of her lower jaw. Very clean cuts from what I heard. They never ended up finding the rest of her. There have been so many stories about children going around too. So many kids going missing and turning up in caves, wedged into impossibly tight spaces. So many of them found on mountain peaks or at the bottom of gullies. Missing shoes and missing socks found in perfect condition miles away from where the kids vanished. Lots of stories about black-eyed people too, wandering around the woods and calling out into the night, mimicking the sound of water or a bobcat screaming. One man who's encountered them has been going to every news station he thinks will listen to tell them the same story. He was deer hunting and had camped out in a remote area and woke up to something scraping up against his tent. He thought it was a raccoon or a fox until the thing pressed its face against the door of the tent, at which point he could clearly make out a human nose and mouth. He kicked at it, but it leaped back and was gone by the time he opened the tent flat with his gun at his side. He fired two warning shots, and when the sound had faded, he heard a snap behind him. A man was standing at the edge of his campsite. This man wasn't wearing any clothing, but also didn't have any kind of human flesh. As the hunter described it, this man looked to be made of some kind of amalgamation of raw meat and hair as if someone had scooped up roadkill and molded it into the shape of a human. The face was lumpy, with only a rough approximation of what a normal person would look like. The thing opened its lopsided mouth and let out the same sound as the gun the hunter had just fired. It did this twice before mimicking the sound of the tent zipper and then fleeing into the night. A young couple out on a hike in the rocky area of my park reported yesterday that they had seen something strange out on a peak that I'm very familiar with. They were taking turns looking through a pair of binoculars when the man noticed a hiker climbing up a very steep part of the cliff face. He'd watched the man scale the slope at an impossible angle, and it didn't even occur to him until later that the person didn't have any climbing gear. When the climber reached the top of the peak about five miles away from the couple, it turned and faced the young man. He said that whoever, or whatever this person was, was looking right at them. The climber waved in an exaggerated manner before snapping in half at the waist and leaping off the peak. 
The man didn't see where the climber landed, but expressed concern about him as he told me the story. I sent the couple on their way and assured them that I would check on it, but I was lying. I won't be turning in a report. There have been about ten others just like it. The climber is pretty well known in that area by now, so I just don't question it anymore. There are so many things about my job I'll never understand, and it would take me years to relay all of the things I've heard in the past few months alone. Hopefully one day, when I feel like my job is no longer in jeopardy, I'll come back to continue sharing these stories. Thank you all for sticking by my side and enjoying everything I've talked about. I'd just like to leave everyone with this advice. If you go into the woods, please, be safe. Bring water, food, and survival equipment. Let people know where you're going and when you'll be back. Don't go on uncharted paths unless you're prepared and you know what you're doing. And above all else, don't touch them. Don't look at them. Don't go up them.